I'm Lauren Bear. <laughs> I'm married to the awesome Dylan Bear of Bear Aesthetics. <laughs> um, I am a registered nurse and a IFBB fitness pro and coach. <laughs> and coach, and coach, the most important yeah. part, coach. So, yeah. so Lauren, let's go ahead and walk through your your fitness journey because I met you obviously whenever you started dating Dill back in the yeah. day. But I know that you've been competing for a long time. So when did you start competing? When did you start training even before that? Yeah, well, so I wouldn't say I really trained before. <laughs> I probably should have. That's like the worst thing that you can do is just hop right in. But I started competing in 2014. At that time, I feel like the bikini division was just like everybody could throw on a bikini and, you know, look good. You know, you had girls with muscle, but I felt like, you know, the development was just not there like it is now. Um, but I started doing bikini in 2014 and that's when I was in college. So I was a freshman in college. Um, and then my, it was my ex-boyfriend that like got me into it. He didn't compete, but he always talked about it. And then when he cheated on me, I said, F you. And I did a show. So he would be mad, (laughs) but I mean, it led to so much. Like, I'm glad that that happened. You know, everything happens for a reason. Um, and then if he was with that, you wouldn't have this life now. Just think about that. He what? I said, if you wouldn't have cheated on you, you wouldn't have this life now. No, not at all. Oh my God. I'd probably be miserable. <laughs> Butterfly effect. Butterfly effect. <laughs> yep, definitely. It was funny too, real quick. There was a time like Dylan and I were probably dating for two years now. And that guy that cheated, he would always like try to creep back in like super weird. And I was in California one day for like the LA Fit Expo and yeah. he must have saw that I was. He's like, let's meet up. I'm like, my <laughs> my boyfriend's with me. You can meet him too. And he actually did. Like Dylan and him met. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It was pretty I awkward. I did not know about the story. <laughs> it was so weird. Oh, it was because it was just too awkward. I kind of just tried to like blink it out. <laughs> but no, that, that yeah. sounds extremely awkward. Yeah. Continue. Or continue. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to say that side story. <laughs> Um, but then from there, I stayed with that first coach for about a year and a half. He was very meal plan macros don't work. And I mean, the things that he was making the team do, which was like consistent of like five people, (laughs) um, it was, they were stupid, you know, like everybody would have zero fat for one week. Everybody at the same time would have zero carb for one week. It was this, like, I didn't know any better, you know? Yeah. Um, so then I saw people starting to post fun food and they were competing and stuff. So that's what made me want to consider macros, even though my coach was like, that doesn't work, but I don't know. Something felt like I needed to go that route because my mindset with food is horrible with that meal plan. Um, and then, so I started working with Adam from see you later leaner. So he's in Ohio. Um, and honestly, he taught me everything I needed to know about macros and I did pretty good, you know, with my shows when I was competing with him, I did the Arnold amateur local Ohio shows. Um, and then during that time when I was with Adam is when Dylan and I started dating, but you know, he was a coach himself, but that was when, you know, his team was yeah. not that well. big. Uh-huh. And so I was like, I don't know if I want the relationship to be like, you're my coach right away. I really like my team right now. So I stayed on the team for a year. And then that year Dylan got his um, degree in dietetics, became a dietitian. And then that's where I'm like, okay, well, we've been together now for like a year and a half. I feel like I should start supporting him more. <laughs> so that's when I had him take over my preps and coaching and everything. Um, and I stayed bikini. And then was it 2019? After that year is when I took like a good time off. And then when I came back that next year, I switched to the fitness division. So basically it's a division that has flips and splits and strength moves. Um, you hit figure poses as well during comparisons. But I've always like loved the division. There's nobody ever really did it or talked about it or taught the routine. And I needed that. Um, so when we moved here to Arizona, Whitney Jones, who's an Olympian, she's like 45 minutes from here. So she helped me with my routine and got my pro card. <laughs> so you're now a pro in fitness. You made the decision to switch from bikini to fitness in 2019. That was so 2019 into 2020 was that year where I was like completely done, like off. And then when we started talking about prep again, I was like, remembered, you know, like Whitney literally lives right around the corner. I've always talked about fitness. Like, why don't we just try to switch it? Like I can't, I knew I couldn't go that far in bikini that deep down. Like I love bikini, but (laughs) you, how, how high did you place? Because you were, you were close to your pro card at one point. Oh yeah. That last show in 2019 was North Americans and I got fifth. So I, yeah. I placed top five. Yeah. I remember thinking 
fifth or sixth. So that was cool. You know, I'm glad that I kind of ended it on that note. So yeah, you know, I was there, but I just felt like something like fitness just felt more me or like that. I would enjoy it. Yeah. It's a completely different sport. So like you mentioned, there's a lot of flippies and there's like a, a lot of gymnastics and stuff like that, but like kind of explain more about like what fitness is about, for, especially for people that don't know. Because it, it is much more niche than bikini. I would even say it's more niche than even figure, which we can I think is the, I think it's the hardest division, honestly, oh, because sure. not <laughs> only agree. do you have to come in freaking yes. shredded and jacked, but you also have to perform a two an, a minute, 30, two minute routine all out as well. And your body fat's low, your food's low. Like it is so easy to get injured in this division, but, and I did, you know that, like I freaking, my neck was a mess during that whole prep. <laughs> well, but, I, I think that like the, the thing that's really hard to compare with fitness and like other, other divisions in bodybuilding, even taking it across like men's division is the fact that like fitness is the only one that has a performance aspect. Yeah. At least to my understanding, is there, is there another women's division at this point that has performances because they, they always throw random stuff in there and I can never remember. Yeah. Yeah. So they have, so you have women's physique and bodybuilding and they do a routine, but it's not like, right. Yeah. You know, the, but there, there used to be before fitness, there used to be something else. Correct. That, that <laughs> one, I could have sworn there was something else that was more routine oriented, kind of like gymnastics, like what, what fitness is. Maybe I'm blanking on on the name, or maybe it used to be fitness too. I think that's what you're thinking of, because like it's funny when I when I started talking about fitness, yeah. the amount of people that didn't even know that this was a division, they were like, "Oh, is this a new division?" I'm like it was actually like one of the first of okay. body. So yeah. that see, I, even I'm getting confused right now because like I yeah. remember seeing seeing like fitness routines from back in the day, and I was like, yeah. "That's odd. That's very yeah. strange. Like I'm not used to seeing that because." It's the only division that has a performance aspect to it, right? And like you said, the other the other divisions, they they have routines, they have posing routines, but you're not required to do anything really athletic. Like you don't have to right. do like strength oriented movements. And yeah. in fitness, it's it's bodybuilding with a gymnastics floor routine. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And so I grew up doing dance and gymnastics. That's the reason why I thought like, shit, I can I can have the best of both worlds: dance. Yeah. Or and then bodybuilding it's awesome um but yeah i mean that was one of the first divisions and then as you know bikini and figure and then of course wellness like as those start growing the fitness division just kind of i think dwindled off a little bit and that's like what i'm learning right now even the pro shows don't bring that many because there aren't that many <laughs> well it's, so it's also diluted right and I, I think that that's part of it too where like fitness it's it's so hard <laughs> like yeah like how many women on the planet can get to like that level of muscularity and body fat and then also do a floor routine? Like there's right. not that many people in the world that can even do that, much less do it at like a very high level. So yeah. like yeah. It, it's it sucks because it's honestly like really fun to watch. It's It's been really right. fun to coach you through it too because it's been a completely different coaching experience for me. Yeah. I coach a lot of competitors, but like doing it for the fitness division is like, it's taxing. It's hard. Like I really have to think yeah. about it too. And that's been fun though. Like it, it breaks you out of your routine and your monotony. And I know that for you, yeah. it was one of those really fun things because you were so used to bikini and bikini yeah. for you was great. Like you, you are obviously a phenomenal poser and like, that's what you really kind yeah. of like. But then again, like the posing is like a dance routine. So I'm like, why don't I just go do the dance thing? <laughs> exactly. But like you, you honestly kind of like made your name initially on like posing. Like, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. Like, I mean, that's that's where you started getting a lot of people interested in, like, coming to you for proposing lessons. And and now you've transitioned into fitness, which is basically posing on steroids. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah. I know. But you know what's, like, I think the coolest thing from that? Like, my goal was to just do it and see what happened. You know, like, yeah. did I expect that I was going to get my pro card that first year? Oh no. <laughs> I just think that, you know, that's awesome that I ended it when I got it, but, um, I just wanted to do it cause it just looked so fun and I could enjoy it a little bit more. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was still hard, but it was very hard, but, um, it was a lot more enjoyable cause it was just like, you know, we were changing our training and there's a lot of that like background gymnastics stuff. Like I love that. That's what I grew up doing. Um, but it's been really cool to see people like switch over and try like I one of my clients Rachel she tried it the following year and she got her pro card it was awesome because she is a dancer 
Yeah. It, like I know that we've alluded to it up to this point a little bit, but like, could you kind of give me a rundown as to the differences between bikini figure wellness and, and also fitness? Like, because those yeah. are, are definitely going to be the most popular women's divisions at the, well, I don't know if fitness is the most popular, but it's definitely closer. <laughs> it's closer to figure than I would say like yes. physique and, and women's bodybuilding is. But if you could kind of compare those four divisions, bikini, yeah. wellness, figure, and fitness, because I I'm just want to make sure that everyone who's listening has like a pretty sound understanding of like what's required for each of those divisions, because it's it kind of gets confusing. Oh my gosh. And I feel bad for people that like family that goes to watch yeah. the show. Like, I don't yeah. know what's going on. <laughs> We go to them so much, so we get it, you know. But um, yeah, so we start with bikini. So bikini now, especially back in the day, like I said earlier, it kind of was like anybody threw on a swimsuit. But now it's like it's insane what these girls are bringing to the stage for bikini. And really, it comes down to balance for bikini. You want to look feminine. You want to have good personality and confidence and flow. The full package, maybe a little bit like pageanty, I kind of say. But then you do need to have very balanced uh, muscle proportions. So full upper body, tiny waist, of course, your glutes, but you don't want them too overpowering. Um, but um, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, then, so you have... A routine um and basically you're just like hitting a front pose maybe a side like a side pose it's kind of it just goes in like a circle pretty much um and then very when you're doing fluid, very, very very elegant very yeah. Elegant. yes yeah and that's why i loved it i loved the posing aspect of it um and then you go up to wellness this is the newest division out of like any of the female ones and it's definitely more of a bigger legs bigger legs for sure bigger glutes you still look feminine, of course, but it's just like kind of like that Brazilian look, you know, like the, the posing a little bit different. They have quarter turns throughout their posing versus bikini. That's just, you know, face the back, face the front. I love wellness, though. It's beautiful. But you do. You need some massive legs. <laughs> some of the girls on the pro stage is wellness. Are like they they make me look not very. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dang. Insane. And it was funny, like when that was brought over here, everybody think, like thought oh, well, I just don't have to diet as hard. I'm like, no, that is not it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and then and then also, like, I, I'm sure that you run into this, into this too, but, like, girls that are a little bit too muscular for bikini are automatically like, well, I'll just do wellness. It's like the proportions feel, that you honestly, need. <laughs> honestly, I feel like any bikini girl that is getting that feedback should go to figure, not wellness. I, I, would, I would tend to agree. I would tend to agree. Yeah. Like, wellness is, it's, it's hard. It's a specific yeah. look. Yeah. yeah. It's hard it's to compete. Beautiful. Yeah. But then figure, figure. Yeah. So figure you have quarter turns as well. It's definitely looking at more so muscle and um, proportions, but definitely way more muscular and leaner than what you need for bikini. Like you don't in bikini, you don't really want veins showing or vascularity. You probably get that in figure for sure. You gotta get lean. Um, and then figure doesn't do like an individual routine with music or anything. It's just, you know, your quarter turns. And then, and then fitness. So how does fitness, as far as like muscularity? Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> muscularity. What, what are they, what are they looking for? How does that compare to the other three divisions? I'm still learning it a little bit just because how the scoring works with fitness, it's very different than any of the other um, categories and divisions. Um, so basically you get a score for the day, which is your comparison. So you're hitting figure poses I, they do judge it pretty identical to if they were judging figure. But the thing with fitness is you have such a variety of different body types out there. It's kind of hard to confuse. Like there's some big or like Missy and Whitney, like they are, they have so much muscle and they, they you know, they do good. It does carry over into your score, but it is the routine that counts more for score. So Let's say, you know, I was maybe in like the third or fourth spot in comparisons and I had a killer routine that could actually make me win the show just because that routine carried over. But they still you still do want muscle, though, for fitness. And I think they're starting to like really let people know that because I mean, I was watching some of them and there are some really, really tiny girls, but and then they didn't do as well. So I think they're taking that physique and that figure look a little bit more seriously and I mean, I've always been told, though, they're like, do not stress too much about your size. Like, don't stress too much about it. Come in with size, but don't, like, you know, feel like you need to be massive. Yeah. And and I think that's helpful because, like, even for me and honestly you, it is challenging. It's trying, like, trying to figure out what the judges are looking for. And 
I've struggled with this a lot with bikini over the years. And this is something yeah. I want to talk to you about is like kind of how the sport has evolved and like from you being on the inside much more than I am, what you've yeah. seen as the sport has evolved, but like trying to figure out what the judges are even looking for. Like that is as a coach, so, so challenging because it's not only evolving from year to year, it's evolving from show to show, Yeah, and especially for, for a division like, like fitness, where even a lot of like the highest level competitors are still kind of like, we're trying to figure this out as we go too. like, yeah. That's a struggle. yeah, I know. It, and I was trying, like now it's like a game for me. Like if I'm watching like a live stream or a show and I'm like watching the comparisons in the morning and then the routines at night, I'm like, Oh, okay. I, I feel like I'm going to know exactly what the plate. No, I'm way off. Like I don't get this. <laughs> I, I mean, with fitness, it depends on who you're doing your routine in front of. Who's the head judge. I know that I've learned Sandy is very big on skills and strength. Um, that was my feedback. I always reached out after and I was, you remember every show, there was something changed in the routine based off of the feedback. And by the last one, I added those things that she just kept saying. She's big on strength and skills yeah. um, and control where like, if it's um, Steve, Tyler, it's probably more of like, what's the most like fun and intriguing and exciting. So it just kind of depends on like who you're, po or who you're doing your routine in front of too. Yeah. And, and what you said to end that, like the stage presence, like that's, that's applicable no matter what division you're in, because right. I've, seen, I've seen bikini girls win their division or win their show, win their class because they're just super charismatic on stage. I'm like yeah. they might not have the best physique, but they're up there and they just command your attention. Like someone who is a really good example of this, Liana, like yeah. Liana has always just like commanded attention whenever she's yeah. on stage. And I've seen it with some other women over the years where I'm just like, I don't know what it is, but they just are like gravitating everyone yeah. to them. It's the confidence, you know, it is. is that confidence it is. that like can pull people in. And I know Sandy's big on that for bikini. Like she's she judges so fair though. You know, she does not giving that winning to somebody who does have way too much muscle or is shredded. It's not what you want for bikini, but it's like the softness kind of that flow, the grace, the personality, like all those things really added for bikini too. Yeah. And I agree, like that. I think that's why Liana was able to stand out in that very first like big show mm -hmm. and make it into that first call out. Cause she just is like, look at me. <laughs> yeah. And that's one thing that not a lot of people understand because, and it took me a long time to understand it. Whenever I was watching bikini shows, I'm like, they all look the same. And then <laughs> whenever it, and to a degree, it's really hard, especially at a high level. Yeah. To differentiate between, between. The oh, the, I it, feel like when you're like NPC and national level, Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at that. But when yeah. it's like at pro level, it's, oof, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's really challenging. But like one thing that has always stood out is stage presence and confidence. And like even at a pro level, it's crazy because some of some of them just don't have it. Like right. you now they're up there and they're not super comfortable, even though their physiques are phenomenal. Uh -huh. They just they just don't uh -huh. have the same, yeah, they don't have that same uh -huh. confidence. They don't have that same swagger walking across the stage like Eliana does. And yeah. Like that to me is just, it's crazy, but yeah. you don't see that in still pictures. Right. Exactly. You're going to see them hitting their poses, but that's, you know, that doesn't even really matter. You know, it's like whatever is getting presented up in front of those judges for yeah, sure. Bodybuilding is definitely a fluid sport. It's something that is not always captured in, in still pictures. Yeah, that's true. Oh, and that's why it's like, we're so big on like, well, I caught myself when I first started competing, comparing myself to freaking everybody. Like, oh my God, this is my height class. Oh my God, this girl. And it's like. I remember one show, it was in Indiana and I followed this one girl and I found out she was in my class just so stalking Instagram and I was freaking out. She had a crazy six pack and like looked so good. I ended up winning that class and she was last place. Like it was because her posing wasn't good. And, and you know, it's just like those things really do matter. <laughs> posing, the tan, the suit, the hair, yep. the makeup, like, like you said, it's, it's, it's kind of a pageant, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and I don't... I don't know. Does that sound derogatory? Like for, for you, like coming from like the bikini class, like if someone says bikini is, is a pageant, like, is that derogatory? Well, if they were saying it just, it's like a pageant. Yeah. I'd say, yeah. But like, I just meant like, there's like, it's kind of pageanty where it's like oh. the full presentation and everything. It's not, definitely not like a pageant, but I, it I, has, I, I know what you meant. Yeah, yeah, it has like some of those aspects because you'd be like your stage walk and stuff like yeah. that, you know, it's about the personality and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. So 
I think it still does kind of have some of those aspects to it. It definitely does. And and for me, like I describe bikini as as kind of like a pageant to a lot of people yeah. whenever they ask me about it. And I'm but sometimes I think That's about that. Way to describe it though. More yeah, I'm always more. like I don't want to discredit anyone, you know, because it, it's it's not like a Miss America pageant or like you miss universe. It's not right. that thing. So no, uh, I would that. I would just word it like it's like it's kind of pageanty, but with muscle. Because <laughs> yeah, they can't look like that out on stage mm-hmm. or like that, you know, like that's not that doesn't that's not their vibe. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, I do want to talk about the evolution of the sport. Yeah. And again, you know, you've been doing this for a really long time. You've been a competitor for a long time. Now you've been a coach for a long time. You've been exposed to a lot in that world. Not even just bikini, but now across yeah. multiple divisions and like BA coaches men too. So like you guys are everywhere now. I I want to just talk to you and hear from your perspective, like the evolution of mostly women's bodybuilding. So so bikini, wellness, yeah. obviously figure. Like whenever you started, you said pretty much anyone could just hop on stage and throw on a bikini, yeah. you know, just start posing. Uh, it is not like that now. No. Oh my God. No, no. It's so competitive now. It's so competitive. And, you know, I think with the, and I, from like, I guess I didn't really notice how fast bikini was growing during that time. I'd say that I entered it kind of at that point where more people were, you know, it wasn't like at its prime, but it was like, people were starting to get more interested in bikini. Um, And, you know, over those years up until now, I feel like I've seen a transition of more bikini figure wellness. That's your main. And then the the physique and the bodybuilding was like, that's definitely died down for sure. But also too, I heard them say like, they just don't want to promote like that size for a female, you know, it's a lot more attainable for doing bikini, even, you know, from natural um, genetics and stuff, well, uh, wellness and figure too, you know, um, it's a little, I guess, safer, but I mean, they still have shows with physique and bodybuilding. I know Arizona has a really big one, but that's definitely not as big. I think it started out there and then it died down. Yeah. And I mean, we don't even have to get into like the health concerns of yeah, no, pushing, that's it. pushing to like that level of muscularity as a woman and all of the issues that come with that. Yeah. Like, you know, whenever you started, it was much less extreme than it is now as far as oh, like yeah. and yeah. there was a period it's it's actually pulled back a little bit but there was a period where most of the girls on stage at like a national show were like almost physique like they almost look like Do jack. yeah but they yeah. were so muscular and so lean and i i remember being at a couple of shows i think it might have been in 2019 maybe i mean it was it was around uh-huh. that era and i would see some of those girls and i'm just like holy shit like yeah, I think it was around that 2018 yeah. time frame. 20, yeah, I'd say it was like 2018 because that was like the year. Yeah, definitely it was that year. Um, no, and I agree, you know, and I think that they noticed that though because mm-hmm. it's not that anymore. They obviously made it so apparent like that is not what we want. Why they were winning those shows during that time, I think it was like a learning um, curve yeah. for a lot of the sport. And then ever since then though, you know, they were placing the Olympians, bikini, like, how they should, you know, it wasn't like who has the most muscle, but it was just who has the good fullness, symmetry, shape, but then presentation. So I like that now it's like, you know what it should look like, you know, there's not too much questioning about it, or at least like if you're doing your research and following that, you should know what like they go for. It, it's interesting though, because like the standard kind of gets set at like the Olympia level, right. And it just kind yeah. of goes down. And if you look at like the Miss Olympias over the years in the bikini division, like it started with a very soft, very, yeah. very like, but, that, but it was though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very, very, very beach body look, and then it slowly builds up. To, I mean, these girls have some giant delts on stage, like they're yeah. really now, like you can see yep. definition in their glute ham, like you can see definition in their lower back, like everything yeah. is quieted, and like holding the picture comparison of like the first Miss Miss yeah. up to like maybe not even this year, but like maybe like 2019. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a stark difference. It's really, yeah. really stark. So like, in your opinion, do you think that that's been a really good evolution? Or do you think that like, maybe like a middle ground would have been better for something like the bikini division, and then maybe push more of like the muscularity and like leanness towards wellness or figure? Well, and I think too, like I said, I think they caught on to that. Because yeah. if you look at the Olympians this year, last year, that, that 
nothing like what those you know that they, those would have softened that. up a lot yeah yeah and i'm i think again it was probably like a learning opportunity for them and i'm glad that they said something so not everybody thinks that that's ideal and like what you want to look like so they've done i think they've done a really good job changing it to get it to be consistent and now we kind of have an idea of like you know we can kind of guess who the top five are going to be here for because we know now what they're going for you know so i think it was good that it led to where it is now but during that time yeah i remember like dylan like like why are these girls so big like he wasn't even expecting that but i don't know i think maybe it was just like an off year (laughs) well what's been challenging especially for me like my job is is to make most of the girls as jacked as possible or make them jacked in the right places right like especially whenever we start getting up to like a really high level it's okay where where can we improve by minuscule amounts without detrimentally affecting your proportions and right and it, it's it's a, a challenging game at a high level whenever you're yeah. working with, with these these women who are basically perfect in terms of physique and you're like okay yeah. how do we make perfect better and and that's a real challenge but like right. what was always super frustrating for me was trying to figure out where to go with like the muscularity and you take like two two years in a row with a client you build them up, build them up, build them up and they get on stage and they're too muscular. And you're like, uh, yeah, I know. Like just I know. Think into your chair. You're like, that is the, that's the worst. Or if they're too lean, right? Like yeah. their, their show before they're too soft and they come in like you and Dill push them. And then the next show they're too lean and they get docked for that. And that's it's like, definitely, yeah. Like, like Alex Granger, that happened yes. a lot for her. Yes. Or Lizzie Cunningham. Like that happened a lot. So of course I think at that point it's like all the growing, you can't really grow during like when you're right there, yeah. but I mean, the growing shows, but you know what I mean? Like you're maximizing on kind of what you're bringing to the stage there. And that comes really down to water, sodium manipulation, food, you know, that right. diet at that point would that's the most important thing, you know, just make yeah. sure they either eat a lot to soften up or, <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe they need like, that was me. I ate once. <laughs> once when? One time during show day. Like that's oh. all I could have. <laughs> I, was, I was like, wait, I need a time range here. <laughs> I, oh yeah. On show day. I got one meal. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, the, at that point, like you're moving around. So I, it, it's fine. It's fine. You can just hold yeah, on. So, I, so, so right, but no, honestly, there there have been some shows where like we don't even get out until midnight, and then everything. Oh, is- I know. So yeah, that's a completely different tangent. But all right, so we've talked a lot about bodybuilding. We've talked a lot about figure, fitness, bikini, all of all of the women's divisions. Kind of want to like shift it a little bit and talk yeah. more about like social media. Um, I know that this is kind of like a weird thing, but like you've had a following for like a while now. Yeah, and and you've been in the spotlight for a while now for better or for worse and now like you and dylan are both collectively in the spotlight and you have a business that works with hundreds thou uh, are you guys up to thousands now i don't know how many clients you have under ba but at least hundreds at least hundreds (laughs) hundreds of clients all over the world and and you guys you've made a pretty awesome name for yourself in, in your business and it can be i'm sure really challenging to always be in that spotlight so like over the years, like what has been like the best part of consistently having like that attention and that notoriety and like, what has been some of like the downsides that you've experienced either yourself or collectively with Dylan too? Yeah. Um, so I guess I, I've always just, even now I look at it differently. I don't know. I just never thought like spotlight. I just, I'm me. (laughs) And that's honestly, it's so funny. I've gotten that question a lot, like over the last, like, you know, but like during my fitness is like, how did you get so many followers? Like literally, I know people invest so much time to like buy followers or build their, I don't, I, do, I just literally post like what I want and I just stay who I am. And I think maybe that's just what attracted my following, you know, just like, I mean, um, I definitely learned a lot over the past several years about that though. Like there was a time where I would read one negative comment and I would be a mess. You know, and I'd say that when Dylan came into my life, he really helped me change that mindset of just knowing you can't please everybody, but (laughs) there's going to be people that do support you. And that's all that matters. The negative, the negativity doesn't matter, you know? Um, But, you know, with Dylan and I, like, and I guess like having those followings or like the team growing, um, we also too, just love to stay out of drama. (laughs) I feel like there's so much drama. It's worse on Twitter. I know we don't have Twitter, but I know it's like so like toxic over there and okay. then you have reddit i know we've been talked about on reddit like social media so yeah i'd say that it's, if anything like we found it's, out. It's, the, 
it's the anonymity that like yeah. people, people enjoy talking about other people's lives behind a, an anonymous wall, right? Like, yeah. and, and that's, it's shitty, right? But like, you know, that is a downside of being in the spotlight. And, yeah. and like, for me, you know, me, I am not like a spotlight type of person. Like I, uh-huh. like, I feel like if I were in you guys position, I had, you know, 50,000, hundred thousand followers. Like I would, I would hate it. Like I would absolutely yeah. hate it, you know? And and sometimes I see that and like, I see like the pushback that you guys get for like the most benign shit, you know, Stupid. that's the thing. It's like, as long as your like your mindset needs to be there, could that really affect somebody and bring them down? Yeah. And it, I used to be there, but then when you work and switch your mindset to think like some people are just going to say stuff. Mm-hmm. And also you can look and read those things and laugh. That's how stupid they are. You know, it's just people that don't have anything better to do. You know, I feel like, but just you know, there's going to be people that say things, but as long as you just like surround yourself with the people that do support you and get it, that's really, it's like, honestly, that stuff doesn't even bother us now at all <laughs> when we see something like that. Well, I mean, that's, that's one of the things like I've really learned over the last few years, like you can't please everyone. And like, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, like there are always going to be some people that just don't like you for whatever reason. And they right. don't, they don't right. agree with you. They don't like how... <laughs> you live your life. They don't like the success that you have. They don't like how happy you are all the time, like whatever it is, right? Like they're going to, yeah. but just don't like you for whatever reason. Right. And like trying to cater to those types of people, like that's just a like, never ending proposition. Like you're always, yeah. gonna be, you know, and it's going to drain yeah. so much energy away from you in, in that process. And like, for me, I have definitely felt a lot more comfortable in like the last couple of years, just kind of being like, you know what? I just don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, right. I don't really care to like try and please everyone at this point. Yeah. And, you know, maybe at the beginning, especially whenever I was like really trying to like build myself up, build my my business up, I was extremely cautious about every single thing I did because I'm like, well, if I alienate one person, that's one client yeah. I might not have, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, but it, like at this point, like you guys have a brand, like mm-hmm. BA has a brand. And like whenever people think in CBA, they associate that brand with certain things, right? Yeah. And that's right. gonna be very different than like, you know, a, a Team Pro Physique or a Fit Body Fusion or any of these other big companies and big prep coaches. It's gonna be very different. And like, I think in a lot of ways, you guys have almost built your own personalities into the foundation of the business. And that's drawn, especially Dylan, especially Dylan. I was going to say definitely Dylan. He's like the fun energy. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> but yeah. You know, it's but, but true. Like, this, draws, it draws a lot of people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think we, I, that's always me too, but Dylan, like the community, like community yeah. is like our priority with the team, but also education, education and community, like having that knowledge and backing and giving good protocols and safe protocols. That's always going to the safety of it. Mm-hmm. But then also like, we all want to win and we can get our girls to win, but also there's a way to do it and still have fun. You know, I think that that's just how we are. We are not these like cutthroat, you have to suffer type of people. I think that there's a different way to do it. And I think just having fun and being yourself, like it makes it fun for everybody else too. Why be miserable? <laughs> well, well, also like this is something that maybe not a lot of people on the outside looking in can can relate to, but like you're dealing with I hate to say it, but like a, a very volatile demographic, Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like middle-aged women who are ex- pretty much extreme, they're extremists in like what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. So they yeah. are, they are hyper-focused on a singular outcome at all times, especially at a high level and yeah. it's really, really hard to always please that population. Right. It really, it really is hard to please them whenever you do. They will love you forever, but if yes. if you slide so. them even a little bit, like you have yeah. to hear, you have to hear it through the grapevine for like the next five years because it just yeah. circles around. But yeah. like one thing that I know that you mentioned, you guys try and really stay out of drama with like the whole fitness industry industry and stuff like that. And if the fitness industry is good for one thing, it's good for drama and it's good for like yeah. a, a <laughs> lot a lot of infighting and a lot of bickering and really a lot of like egos. <laughs> Yeah. A, oh, a lot, yeah. a lot of ego <laughs> clashing. Yep. Like, how do you guys try and like separate the the ego ness of like really wanting to like build your brand up, wanting to like promote your athletes yourselves, be the biggest company in all of of bodybuilding? Obviously, like you guys want that. You guys want to be the yeah. biggest prep company. How do you do that? But like also 
eliminate the ego side of it. It's, it's challenging. It de- definitely, you know, and I honestly think it comes down to like how Dylan and I live our relationship of communication and honesty. Like if there's an issue, we'll go to the person directly and bring it up and like, but what most people do, they're going to post about it all over Instagram. And then it spreads to way too many people that don't need to know about, you know? So yeah. I think it's like, like if Dylan and I ever have any concerns or issues, we bring it up and we talk about it. So we've actually always, we that's how, like, for example, there's been many times where we'll have a client from another team reach out, but we're friends with that coach. We've always, and will never change. Like we will text or call that coach first to make sure they know about this. And if they don't, then we all talk together. It's just literally that easy. <laughs> Nobody like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why people want to be a little bit more slimy and sneaky. And maybe it is the ego, you know? Um, but we've just always like wanted to be respectful to everybody. And for, we want everybody to get along. I know that doesn't always happen. But <laughs> and, just talking, yeah, and communicating and yeah. just being honest. It's it, it really does suck because like the absolute best case scenario for every single client is if every coaching team and every coach got along and if they, yeah, all, right. if they all work together. Right. So like, yeah. obviously for, for my company and y- your company, like we work together really well. Like that's the goal, yeah. right? We, we understand yeah. like where we fit. We understand like where our niches are. And like, we try to yeah. collaborate for our client's benefit. Yes. But there are like, that's, that's rare. That's like super rare. Yeah, it and, is. It is. There's been so many times where, you know, and I will I'll support whatever a client wants to do, but there, there are a couple of like times where I get, I need somebody that co- like does it all. You know, I don't want to work with a trainer and then the nutrition, but it's like, you know, like we know that we're better in nutrition and you are better. And it's like you said, it's not common. So yeah. for a lot of people, it's like, well, that's weird. Like, why are you doing that? You know, <laughs> well, what, what's strange to me is like, if you, if you put that in any other context in any other profession, it would seem weird, right? Like, you wouldn't go to like your general physician if you had brain trauma. You're like, I'm going to go yeah. to a neurologist. Yeah. Right? Right. Like right. if you have cancer, you're not just going to go to your, your general physician. You're going to go to, an yeah. neurologist. you know what I mean? Like you go yeah. to a specialist to get the yeah. best in, in that yeah. field. And, and that's how we view it. we've always viewed it like that, you know? Exactly. Like, like for me, I can definitely help out with, let's say like blood work, right? Yeah. But I also know there's a lot of people that are much better than me at reading blood work uh-huh. and people that I know in the industry that are much better than me at reading blood work. So if I have a client that comes to me and they're like, Hey, here's my blood work. And I see something that I don't know what, why it looks that way. I'm like, you know what? I'm confused on this. Let me, <laughs> let me refer you to someone else. Right. Uh-huh. And, and like, I think that's the way that it should be though. But there, right. like, there's so many egos and it's, it yeah. almost feels like, like certain coaches and certain people would rather be wrong. Yeah. And then like send a client to someone else that could give them a better, a better service. The ego. The ego is a crazy thing. It's all the way up here. So they're like, I'm always right. It doesn't matter, you know? And then like we always look out for our clients' safety and health. So, you know, then it's a shame like knowing like that's probably not their priority. And you will get that. You know, that's why I think bodybuilding sometimes gets such a bad rep because there's just people doing stupid shit. Yeah. So on that stupid shit note, <laughs> um, so I I know that recently, like there have been even national news stories about women's bodybuilding and the health issues that have come from some of the more extreme protocols. So like, I don't want to obviously ask like you to name drop anything. I would never do that. But why do you think things have gotten so extreme? Do you think it's just, again, chasing the results of the kind of evolving classes or do you think that it's it's certain coaches and certain certain companies that have created more of like this acceptance of pushing at all costs and maybe even doing that as like an easy way out versus being able to push a diet, being able to understand the science and nuances of like where to push, where to pull back, how to actually communicate with your client. And they're like, you know what? Drugs, eat less, do more cardio. <laughs> yeah. You'll be good. I'll, I'll talk to you in, in a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why uh-huh. do you feel that is? Like, do you, do you feel like it's just maybe like a knowledge gap or do you feel like they just truly yeah, don't? I was, just about, to, yeah. I was about to say education, you know, yeah. I'm sure like a lot of them were transitioning to like from, which, and they still practice, you know, more of that bro bodybuilder approach. And yes, you know, the sport's evolving hundred percent. Everybody's bigger. Like 
Dylan doesn't even want to look like men's physique because he thinks it's too big. You know, he likes like his more beach bod, <laughs> yeah. but he's definitely bigger than that. But he, he says that all the time. Um, it's the sport evolving, but then also I think it is like the lack of, you know, education or maybe it's just what they did before. So it's going to work for this person. Yeah. I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. It, it's honestly not fun to see that stuff. It's oh, it's not. It, it makes us so angry to know yeah. that like that, happened you know or like those things yeah. happen i mean people are like, yeah it's losing their lives if it gets to that point you know and then yeah. i feel like i never even see the coach themselves take the blame yeah and and i mean we've we've been doing this we've been in this world for long enough to where we've seen some like pretty egregious shit like whether it's a client coming to us whether it's a rumor that we hear about what a coach is doing with their clients like you hear some shit and you're like that can't be true there's yeah. no way that's real and then you finally see it and you're like holy shit like why what are we doing here like like yeah. are we allowing this to happen and like i've definitely had a few moments like that over the years where i'm just like like i yeah. i i can't continue doing it. like this is right. crazy. Like, like one of my clients or like someone that i'm i'm i know is going to die eventually and like that that sucks to have to yeah. think about that you know but like i i would hope that eventually we all get to a point where like some of those coaches eventually get pushed out yeah. And no one starts going to them. But honestly, I I feel like those are the types of coaches as well to have like the cult leader-esque personalities to where even, yeah. even if they're having those issues with their clients and it becomes public, like, gonna... they still have clients going to them. You know? And you know what? I think it might be just one of those things. Like it, at that point, it's out of your control. You know, like there's going to be people that aren't making the best decisions with it, but either just kind of staying in your own, stay in your own lane. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, like if they want to do that, like, you know, it's just, it's a shame knowing like they're going to have to learn the hard way. Like, yeah. yes, you and I, like, we hate that. We can't do that. We want to like reach out and help. We're just very giving and helpful, you know? So yeah, yeah I know it's like trying to find that like fine line of like, you don't want to overstep your boundaries, but then you also want to be honest and let, you know, but then not being too vocal. <laughs> yeah, well, an another issue too is like it, in this industry, it's, it's unregulated, you know, like, like there's no board of oversight, you know, like I, yeah. I, compare, I compare a lot of what we're doing to like, you know, financial advisors, because as much as we're in charge of people's health and financial advisors are, are in charge of people's money, both of those or, or collapsing either one of those and really fucking something up is going to have negative impacts across that person's entire life. Right. Like, yeah. If someone gives you their their life savings and you lose all of it because you're a shitty financial advisor, you just ruin that person's life. If someone comes to you as a client and you ruin their health, their life has been negatively altered forever because of you. And if you plan somebody's wedding and then steal thirty thousand dollars from them, you're gonna ruin their marriage. Oh my god! Well, luckily your marriage uh, wasn't ruined. <laughs> what? Luckily your marriage wasn't ruined. No, 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 it did not at all. But I'm like, hey, if we got out, if we got out, like we survived that, we'll survive anything. Well, <laughs> now I mean, it's just laughable at this point. But that I just had to throw that was identical to the other <laughs> examples. <laughs> throw that one out there. Just but <laughs> but but I, I think it's it's it like I said, it's unregulated, but like that also invites a lot of I, I don't want to say scammers because I don't think that people come into like the fitness industry and like want to become a coach like purposely to just like take people's money like i i truly don't think that i think that there are there has been a couple but well, they I, I, think that a, I think that a lot of people come in and they see it as an industry where they can make money but i don't think anyone comes in necessarily being like i'm yeah, true, as, much, true. as much money as i can yeah. from all these people and not give a shit and, right. they, yeah. and they understand that like they're not qualified they don't know what they're doing I, I feel like a lot of people see it as a potential way to make a living because yeah because you can make a living relatively easily doing this, but they don't understand what, what it entails and they get in over their head really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'll try to take on too many things at once and yeah. half-ass everything instead of focusing on one. I feel like that's a super common thing. Um, yeah. You know, get too ahead of themselves. Yeah. And, and this is maybe like a stupid question, but like, again, whereas all these other professions have like oversight, right? Like there, you have boards that you have to answer to, right? Like if you're, again, a financial advisor and you completely drop the ball and lose people's life savings, like you will get your license revoked. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. Like if you're, if you're a doctor and you fuck something up, like you will not be allowed to be a doctor anymore. Like that's just how yeah. the world works, but we don't have that in this, in this industry. Like there's no one really who oversees 
what these coaches are allowed to do and allowed to get away with. And it's more of like, like a social layer type of thing, right? Like, like whenever someone does something that's really shitty and like, you're now really seeing this, like, what's the guy's name who like really calls people out on, on Instagram? Um, like our friend, Kenny? Kenny no, Gale? No, no, <laughs> no, not him. Um, it starts with a G. Oh, Greg, you said no, not that guy. Is it like Goob something? Oh, Goob. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, honestly, like that's honest. That's like the oversight in this industry yeah. is is having people like call out, like call you out on social media, and almost like hate to say it like this, but like shame you out yeah. of the spotlight. And like, I, I don't think that that's the right way to do it necessarily. I either. Like, I like that he. I love that he puts a light on things. You know, I mean, we were involved in one of them. We were yeah. other, but um. I, I like that he puts a light, but also like, you know, like Dylan and I just don't like drama. Even that I was like, you know, he came to us and we answered the questions. I barely, I didn't want to like engage or like, I just don't want to be involved in drama. Right. But again, that's like, you can choose that. It's good. Like maybe just pick and choose like what you take. And I mean, I definitely have learned things from his page where I'm like, well, I view that person way different. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's a net benefit, right? Like I, I think yeah. that like doing stuff like that whenever there is no oversight currently that's the only thing we have <laughs> like like unfortunately kind of these like citizen journalists or like investors yeah. <laughs> are, are are the only people that are like shining light on on scammers and people that are like yeah. taking advantage of people yeah. in the industry and like i've looked on his page a couple of times like some of the shit is that's on there is like makes you kind of sick you're like yeah oh i know like there was there was some woman who was like telling her clients that she had cancer so that she could get clients that had cancer. Like she was telling people that she, she was like in recovery or in remission from cancer so that she could get that demographic of client. But she, she was lying. Like, wow. but like, that's the type of like sociopaths that kind of get gravitated into this world for whatever reason. Again, maybe it's just the ego thing, like what we talked about earlier, but but no, I mean, I, I don't know what the answer is to that. Like how we we collectively. Um, you know, I think the closest thing that I've heard over the past couple of years that it's still not like you, they're really, I mean, yeah, a coach is a coach, yeah. you know, there, there is no license or anything like that. Like they are going to just keep doing it. Hopefully they learn, but usually they just keep doing it to somebody else. Um, but I do know last year, I don't remember what the, what it was, but I do remember, um, you know, some of the coaches like went up to Sandy and Joe like the and, and brought it up to their attention because that's us probably not getting back to them at all. So right. they went out of their way to just let them know like, hey, this is going on and leave it at that. Then it's up to them, of course, to decide if they want to take it further or not. But also the sport just loves money. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, not even sport, just the industry. I mean, it's just the, yeah, industry. Like, the yeah. industry loves money. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's it can be a challenge at times. It can be a challenge. It can be. Yeah. But I think again, like if you allow yourself to go down that route, you just have to have a good mindset and like make the right decisions and do your research. That is the biggest thing. Like do your, and you've made posts about that all the time. Like do your research for coaches, teams. Don't just join somebody because your friend did like, you need to find somebody that's perfect for you and has your health and safety first. Yeah. And, and that's a huge thing. Again, like we, we are in control of people's health and it is a huge responsibility that I don't think a lot of people really understand the magnitude of it. Whenever they yeah. decide to be a coach, they don't understand that they really are holding people's health in their yeah. hands. Uh -huh. and, and if you, if you make a mistake, like that might not affect you personally. It might not affect like your, your bank account, but like you could potentially affect someone else's life forever. Yeah. And like that. That's yeah. a really, really big deal. And, and, I don't, I don't think, think people view it as serious as what it is, no. you know, because yeah. I don't know, maybe I have that mindset. You have that mindset, Dylan, because we went through the courses and the training. We have that like life or death mindset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, you know, like bedside nursing. And yeah. then I mean, it's just like licensures and just safe. Like that's just always what's been engraved in our brains through school, you know? So I think that's why we go about it this way. Cause we're like, well, I don't want to get like in trouble or like, you know? <laughs> well, also too, like kind of going back to what you were talking about with like BA and like community. Like, I think that we have done such a good job of building relationships with our clients too, to where like you, you would feel like the worst person in the world. If you were yeah. to like, 
like fuck your client over or like wreck their health like because they're also your friends at this point you know like yeah like, that's true names, they're not just names yeah. behind a screen like we know all of our clients yeah. extremely intimately now and that's a good point you know like i guess i've not i know that but then just like hearing you say it like that you're yeah. right you know i think that you know as teams get bigger it's of course harder to do that but i definitely you know we, we love being friends with everybody and it's like family and friends at that point so that is definitely something that makes us different than other teams of course like there's always friendships within teams but i know what you mean i think at some point it's like almost like routine work for some coaches like in and out check in check in where it's like i think we take the time you know to get to know them more that that definitely makes us and you guys too different for sure and definitely something that we can like pride ourselves on and yeah it, it distinguishes what we're doing from i think what a lot of other people who are just getting into the industry for money and they're just trying to like have a side job to supplement like their their nine to five or whatever it is it's yeah. like like whenever you're doing it at a high level like you like this is oh, it's not yeah. just a job you know like it's a really yeah. really large responsibility but I want to kind of wrap this up just talking about your relationship with Dill because obviously I've known you guys for a really long time and uh-huh. I've seen the progression of your relationship from like this was long distance relationship. Wasn't it? You guys yeah, were, like, we were like two hours apart. I was in yeah. Canada during school and he was at Ohio state. Yeah. And obviously now you guys are married. You guys have a business together. You have a beautiful house. Like you have done everything. It's awesome. So like, we talked about you being in the spotlight, both of you, and how how that is not always the the most beautiful thing in the yeah. world. But like, where do you see you and Bill's relationship kind of continuing to grow alongside the business? And like, have you guys ever struggled to maintain like that business in one bucket, marriage and partners in another bucket, and then also like friends? Like, because at the end of the day, you guys are friends, and like that's what yeah. you. Want always be like do you guys ever struggle with that so in the beginning of us during that long distance part that was the only struggle really and it was me that had to have like <laughs> dylan was well and he was he was the only one coaching and maybe at one point he did have one assistant coach but still you know the team was slowly growing but it was way too much for one person to handle um i think at one point he had like 130 and I like we went on a vacation for his birthday. We went to Greece and Italy. And this was at the point where it was just him and we were, you know, sightseeing and there was minimal Wi-Fi. And in the back of his head, I guess, you know, was so stressed, like that yeah. he couldn't answer his emails. There's like a oh, pile and pile. And he actually broke out of shingles after the trip because he was so stressed. But I remember like I would go to his apartment. He would just be at his kitchen table till 2 a.m. studying and or answering emails and stuff. Like yeah. there was off or like the minute he would leave the house he'd be on his phone on the car like go with the next email I'm like Dylan you need a, a break at some point so I would I feel like I was definitely the one that helps shift his mindset because I was like hey I'm not needy but I there was a time where I was like okay you do need to put the phone down a little bit you know and then ever since we had that conversation he really did you know he changed the way that he would set time aside to work and now we kind of live like that we'll do our emails for three hours in the morning. We'll go work out. That's our break. We'll come back home. And that's just always worked for us. So we found something that we felt like we were still enjoying each other's company and focusing on one another. But I'd say that that was the only challenge was in the beginning because he was just used to being on his own, you know? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Lauren. Is there anything that you want to say before we go? I hope you guys like the podcast. Um, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, it's just at fitness first underscore IFBB pro. And then I also do like beauty fillers, Botox. So that's buffed beauty underscore RN and then our team at bare aesthetics. And we also have a YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. <laughs> that's <Right>. it. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Lauren. 